know, so uh, here we are again. Another day, another tench session. Actually down on uh, the linear complex for a 24 hour session there, uh, first all nighter of the year. It's uh, really not tench weather, it's uh, pretty cold. It's a cold northeasterly wind. It's been raining uh, for most of the day as well. It's uh, looking to drop uh, down to zero through the night as well. So it's, you know, terrible uh, conditions for tench fishing, but you know, sometimes you just got to go when you can get out. Uh, I'm on uh, Hardwick Smith's and I'm down with Simon, fishing cowboy. There he is. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, get a tench or two. I mean, we don't have very high expectations. Um, but there's always, you know, carp that we could try to catch as well. Uh, who knows? But um, let's see how it goes, shall we? Paul's just popped into something. There can't, can't be a tench doing that, surely. That's weird. So this is on the uh, plastic casters. Is it? Yeah. There's likely to be a tench. It's coming in fairly quickly and kiting. It feels like a tench, other than the fact it just jumped out of the water. Because it isn't very old. It's not far out, just it's gone underneath a rovier or the rod. It's a good looking car. Do you want to get that? Oh, no, it's there. Here you go. Yeah, you got her. Well, it's been a few hours since we got here. I haven't put any bait in since I arrived. And I'm trying three different spots, three different baits. And it's the plastic, plastic caster that's uh, won, won first prize so far. Sign me up. I've got a whole, whole evening to go. There you go. We were weighing just to get our eye in, but I'm a plastic casters, tench fishing. And I've had my first fish. It's not the target species tench that I really want to catch. It's a pesky mirror carp. It's not a big one. But there you go. First fish of the session. Like I say, it's not really the tench that I'm here for, but it's got a bit of weight to it. Lovely job. Hopefully that uh, commotion caused by this, let's call it a nuisance fish. It's nice to catch fish, any fish really, but uh, when you're after tench, the nuisance fish, that's for sure. But hopefully it's not uh, destroyed the swim. But uh, excellent. I mean, that was what, second cast of the day. Well, I say day, the, uh, the after work session. Lovely job though. Let's put it back, get that rod back out. See if we can get tench instead. Well, there we go, first of the season. It's got a few of these uh, little parasites on them, on its tail. It's got a bit of a wound here as well. But nice male, look at those. Oh, look at those. Anyway, let's uh, put him back and hopefully get his uh, girlfriend. Oh, 
Well, happy days. They're catchable. Really nice male. Six pound eight. On the worm again. So at this point, I think I'm on uh, three short evening sessions and a full day and a 24 hour session. And I've had uh, two tench and two carp to show for my efforts. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's clearly a bit too early. It's still cold. There's still uh, northeasterlies and high pressures and uh, it's just not right. But I'll keep uh, getting out when I can. And sooner or later, it's going to warm up and those tench will start getting their heads down and feeding and we'll, we'll get some uh, more tench for the cameras. So another day, another venue. It's my local club water. There's been a few tench come out this year. Only a handful, mind you. And I think most of those have been to carp anglers fishing with their Boilies, Chods and Ronnies and things like that, PVO bags. But I'm uh, persevering with the more traditional tench tactics of uh, worms. I've got one uh, rod fishing in the margins with popped up worms and one at range with uh, the uh, worm kebab heli feeder. It's nice and sunny, but you can see that there's a lot of heavy cloud cover. Just got the uh, sun on my back, it's a bit clearer behind me. But uh, it's still pretty cool. Again, it's not really feeling like tench weather yet. Um, but this is just a short afternoon session, one after work session, sort of evening session really. Only down for sort of three, three hours maybe. And uh, I'm down here to collect some fire with the uh, fisheries team. have done quite a lot of uh, cutting back trees and there's quite a lot of wood around. So I've got a log burner at home and I've got a fire pit in the garden. So I thought I'd come down and take a bit of wood. And of course, if I'm coming down here, I might as well bring the rods down and cast them out for a couple of hours just to see. Speculative uh, short session. But sooner or later these tents are going to turn on and uh, I'll be a happy man. But let's see how it goes. So another short after work session. I've got, I don't know, two and a half hours, really not a lot of time today uh, before I head home. I didn't get down here until about 7.30, so really don't have a lot of time. But I'm uh, all clipped up on the spot. I've put uh, only four uh, spots worth of micro pellets out. And I've got a little, uh, trim down wafter that's popped up just above the weed that I'm fishing over. It's just a light bit of weed on a, on a relatively clear patch. And then uh, my second rod is pretty much in the margins, just to, sort of off the tip of a overhanging tree. Um, again, it's a relatively clear patch. It's somewhere that other people have raked. And it does get raked sort of regularly through the season every year. So it's kind of always a little bit lighter. I've not done any raking myself, but I've dropped one in on the uh, margin there, and uh, that's on a uh, that's on a little white pop-up. So it's very unusual for me to use uh, boilies and pop-ups for my tench fishing, really, other than when I'm using a method feeder. But um, we'll see how it goes. Sorry about the noise. We're right next to a, a biker's cafe, and uh, it sounds like they've all decided to uh, head home now. So I've. Uh, had a bit of a look around using the deeper. Found a spot that's uh, a little lighter on the weed. I mean, it's a very weedy 
pit that I'm fishing. But I found a, a, a couple of spots actually that are much uh, lighter on the weed and I've just got this uh, castable rake that I'm gonna chuck out a few times. I don't want it, you know, completely polished off. I want it to make a, a spot fishable basically and I'm using heli rigs and uh, inline feeders and things like that. So they're all pretty sort of uh, capable of, of coping with, with a bit of weed. I just want to clear a bit of a, a space uh, where I can bait up. So I've got chopped worm, casters, some dead maggots, and a mixture of uh, three different types of micro pellet there, two mil micros. Played around with the casters. I've got uh, one rod on the, uh, the worm kebab rig that I use all the time. That's my sort of banker rod, really. But then I'm sort of dabbling a little bit, and this is my uh, caster rig. So it's a little D that I've made out of the hair and then blobbed it. And that's sort of neutrally, it's not quite neutrally balanced, it's just uh, the, the hook is just heavy enough to make the uh, three casters sink. But the idea is the, uh, the feeder drops into the weed and this follows it slowly and just rests on top. Um, alternatively, I can actually hook the bait into the PVA bag that I'm using. And as you can see, I'm using a PVA bag full of casters on a flat bed method feeder. And the way this works is the line comes into the method feeder this way. I've got a little uh, sinker on the line to tighten things up and I've got the line going uh, through the hole in the uh, method feeder and then up and over the PVA bag and then down to a little bead and then my hook link is just tied on with a loop onto the little bead and uh, it's quite a nice way of presenting casters I think something I've kind of adapted from a few of the tench fisher guys that I know who've been fishing with casters and uh, they've done really well on it and it's about time that I uh, gave it a go as well I think. So it's uh, quarter to six now and I've actually had two runs both on the same rod both on the worm rod so I think I'm gonna put um, the other rod that I'm fishing on the same spot over to worm as well. I lifted into the first run and didn't feel anything, even though it did take quite a bit of line before I got to the rod. And the second one, the uh, eight pound hook link snapped. So it's uh, likely it should be either a carp or uh, quite possibly a pike. And I've had quite a few pike uh, from this pit on the worms. So it could well have been that. But you know, it's the sort of thing that uh, 
lift the spirits a bit. So I've got the rod out again on the same spot and uh, fingers crossed I'll get another chance. It's about six o'clock. I've managed to get my first one. I haven't weighed it yet, it's not, not very big. But it's the uh, first tench from this lake this year. So I'm very happy, especially after having those two runs and losing whatever it was that took the bait those two times. This, uh, this one's been resting in the margins whilst I've sort of a mat and uh, stuff out, so it's a little bit lively. So if it flaps around, forgive me, but there we go. First one from this lake, like I say, of the year. I do love the tench in this lake, the lovely dark colour. Happy, happy days though, eh? That was on the worm, and that was actually on the, uh, the rod that I changed. So I'm really glad that I decided to do that. But anyway, let's uh, let's put this one back and uh, get that rod back out again. Hopefully it's feeding time and we might get a few more. Lovely job though. Yay. Number two. Haven't weighed it yet. Probably four pounder, I reckon. Yeah. Went through the line of my other rod again, so that's uh, gonna have to think about my line management a bit, I think. Great to be catching tench again though. Lovely job. That was on the worm kebab as well. So it's uh, about 10.30 now. Simon's gone home. And so far I've had those two tench and uh, oddly enough, they were both five pound one ounce. I actually had to go back and uh, have a look. Just double check it wasn't the same fish that I caught twice. But uh, no, different fish, but both five pound one ounces, both on the worm kebab. So uh, I've now got two of the three rods on the worm kebab and the uh, third rod's the maggot feeder and uh, frankly if I don't get a bite on that through the night I'll be putting that onto the uh, worm kebab as well first first light tomorrow <laughs> So those geese were a right pain last night. They wouldn't shut up. Absolutely knackered. And to top it off, I've just lost a decent tench at first light. It weeded me solid. So a very frustrating night. I'm now down to two rods because last night, end of April into May is the uh, turning point for the three rod rule. And they've also changed the locks on the uh, the gates because it's kind of the new season for the club but uh going down to two rods to be honest probably isn't a bad thing because every single one of the fish that i've uh hooked or or landed has uh managed to go through my other rod or uh, both rods so uh i do wonder whether sometimes it's better to use two rods rather than uh, being greedy and going with the three but a nice morning now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to nick a couple more before I go home around lunchtime. Nice to be back on this lake though. Just forgot about the damn geese. Well, it's uh, 11 o'clock now in the morning and it's time to pack up. Only had those two tench. But I lost five in the end, and uh, that's obviously very frustrating. I think I'm going to use slightly larger hooks next time. Uh, but I think that's uh, the only thing I'm going to change to start off with. I've been uh, getting bites, which is a great sign, so I'm looking forward to getting back down here again. But uh, time to back up. 